Here's what you need to know about compiling files in CoKit 3. When the files list is open but nothing specific is selected, the right-hand inspector pane shows general information about my project. If I'd like to narrow down what's in this list, I can do that in the scope popover button right here, where I get a search field, or I can choose a single type of file to see at once, for example, just images. When I select a file in the list, the right-hand inspector changes to show me options for that type of file. Here, SAS. Most languages have some options, but every language has a special section, Output. Here is where I tell CodeKit what to do with this file and where to put the output. There are three actions I can set. Ignore, which means when CodeKit detects a change to this file or when the project is built, do nothing with this file. The second option is Compile, sometimes referred to as Process or Optimize, depending on the kind of file that you have selected. Here, that means run the SAS compiler on this file using the options I've specified up here. The third output action I can set is just a plain copy. For example, if you have a file named readme.markdown, CodeKit can compile markdown files to HTML, but that's not really what you want to do with that file. You want it to stay in markdown format and just move wherever the output path is. That's why copy is available. Below that is where this file will be output to. This style.scss file is going to compile to build CSS style.css. This path is relative to the project root folder. If I'd like to change it on a file by file basis, I do that by clicking change here. Here, I just select somewhere else to put the file and I can rename its file name right here. I can use a star to represent the input file name. The lock button has a special meaning. When it's closed, what that means is that CodeKit won't update the output path as the input path changes. For example, if I rename style to main.scss, CodeKit will not change the output path to be main.scss. When this is unlocked, CodeKit will update the output path as the source file moves around. Some file types have a second inspector pane named linked files. Here, I see that this style sheet imports all of these partial SAS files and it's imported by nothing else. Next, you may see some folders that are dimmed in CodeKit's file list. If I select node modules, for example, I'll see that it's a skipped folder. By default, CodeKit does not index node modules folders because they often contain upwards of 50,000 files and that slows down the project. But I can tell CodeKit that when this project builds, I need it to copy this whole folder and everything in it to an output path which is what I've done right here. Copy this folder's content to this path, build slash node modules. This option is not available for folders that are indexed, where everything under the folder is listed. For example, selecting base just shows me that it has two items. If I wanted to control which items do what, I would just select them individually underneath the base folder. So far, we've looked at configuring options on a file by file basis, but there's another way to do it. If I open project settings, I'll see every language that's built into CodeKit, as well as languages that you've added yourself. When I select one of these languages, I'll see the same options that I had in my right-hand inspector panel with just a single file selected. But when I change any of these settings here, the new setting is automatically applied to all files of the selected type in my project. Below these options, are the same output path options that we had in the inspector, just with a little more detail. What this does is tell CodeKit how SAS files should handle their output by default. For example, I have the same three actions, should SAS files ignore, compile, or copy by default, and then where should the output go? It's broken down into two sections, the folder where the output should be created and what that output file should be named. Here, because CodeKit's website uses a build folder, I simply mirror the input path into the build folder. But you can choose a relative folder from wherever the source file is or the project root folder, or you can simply replace parts of the input path with whatever you would like. Finally, you can name the file anything you want with an asterisk representing the input file name. So here, any SAS file will simply compile to star.css. Unlike the section above, when I modify the settings in the output section, the new options are not automatically applied to existing SAS files in my project. They're used instead for new SAS files that I add from here on out. 
And the reason for this is these options can be pretty destructive. I could really mess up my project if I changed them and wasn't prepared for everything to warp to the new settings. However, if I would like existing files to adopt my new settings, I just click this button right here and that'll happen automatically. Your best bet is to configure your language options for all the languages you plan to use before you start working on a new project. That way, you don't have to modify much as you're working. 